Welcome, welcome everyone. So glad to see everybody again and hope everyone's continuing to have a great summer. Uh, today, we're very, very honored to have somebody that I and many of us have admired, have really admired for a very long time, Dr. Rachel Ehrenfeld. And she's going to be discussing her relatively new book, The Soros Agenda. Uh, former uh, U.S. Attorney General Michael McKay's introduction to the book notes that Soros, quote, has done more to spread anti-Israel propaganda than anyone on the face of the earth, according to a former U.S. ambassador to Israel, referring to, to David Freeman, and has cynically used his Jewish birth to hurl promiscuous accusations of anti-Semitism at anyone who dares to criticize him. Uh, we have often come up against uh, the groups that Soros uh, ha has been funding, the anti-Israel groups and the harm that they have done uh, in our work at ZOA, uh, defending the Jewish people and, and uh, you know, try trying to help Israel. Um, so this is really timely and I'm, I'm sure of great concern to all of us. Um, Please, uh, please go ahead, Dr. Ehrenfeld, and uh, tell us tell us about the book, and then we're going to open this up to questions and answers. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, Mukhesi also said that uh, Rachel Ehrenfeld brings skill and passion to presenting an, a damning indictment of a dangerous man. This I is coming, have added that. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, this this coming from uh, a former judge. Uh, former Attorney General of the U.S., although the current Attorney General doesn't give much, um, uh, doesn't contribute much to the um, uh, credentials or honors or the respect that we had to Attorney Generals, um, some. Uh, at any event, uh, I do, and I think that that's a wonderful, um, um, wonderful endorsement. Um, I have written the Soros uh, Agenda, the name of the book. Um, at this time, I actually wanted to do it before, um, but it's good that it was delayed because I, I think that we are at a time that it's very important that people will realize how deeply Soros is involved in American domestic and foreign policies and how he um, has uh, planned um, his strategy, uh, his uh, attacks actually, what kind of tactics have been used um, in order to undermine both the United States and Israel and many other countries on the way uh, since uh, his foundation has been operating in um, at least 120, more than 120 countries, uh, which uh, was what was stated on the website, uh, can be 180, can be 150. Uh, however, he had, he has had, still has a uh, huge influence in many, many places and meddling in many, many, many countries, domestic affairs. Um, today, I think there was an announcement um, that uh, they are going now that his son, uh, Alexander, is um, the, he's holding the reins for the foundation. Uh, Soros transferred it in June to his young, to uh, one of his youngest sons, Alexander. Uh, they will focus, as, as Alexander said, uh, in the glamorous PR announcement in uh, the Wall Street Journal in June that um, he, they will focus more on the United States and not so much in Europe um, and move their activities elsewhere where there is a need to encourage democracy and, and fight for human rights and climate rights and um, uh, global warming and transgenderism and you name it. So he said initially that he will be, that he is more political than his father. I don't know what it means because his father um, has been, I think, um, <laughs> completely political, he is completely political. And the fact that he moved the um, daily management um, 
uh, to his son, uh, doesn't mean much, Soros is still alive. He just celebrated his 93rd birthday last Friday. And how we say it, Ad Mea Vesrim. And uh, hopefully he will live a long and happy life. Uh, but he's still involved and certainly contributing more money and um, um, giving surely <coughs> advice that uh, is being heeded by his son and uh, uh, Melo Brown, who is uh, actually the CEO of the, of the organization. Uh, Soros had, um, I, I first paid uh, attention to Soros, of course, uh, when he raided the Bank of England, uh, he bet against the pound, and officially, um, uh, unofficially, he never tried to correct it, actually. Uh, it was published that he made a um, billion dollars uh, overnight on uh, betting against the pound, uh, devaluating the pound. Uh, I actually spoke with the uh, former exchequer, um, of, uh, of, of England um, when this happened. And it turns out that it is uh, closer to $20 billion. So it doesn't matter because when it comes to Soros um, funding, uh, the information is very, very, um, well, opaque. Uh, and his foundation had, had um, the, um, uh, ranking of the most opaque foundation, uh, least transparent foundation of all similar NGOs that operate uh, not only in the United States, but also in the world. So um, how much money Soros has been giving here or there, um, it really, yeah, he's giving a lot, some of it we know, but most, in my opinion, most of it we don't. Uh, so I, I started to pay attention to his activities back in um, 1993, 94, at the end of 93. He opened his uh, Open Society Institute here in Manhattan, not far from where I live. I could see his offices from my building, um, from my window. And uh, the first thing that he started to do was to try to legalize all drugs in the United States. Why? Because that's what he said. But um, what was behind it was his attempt to see how uh, much can he influence uh, the American, uh, American values and how successful can he be in pushing um, um, legal reform, if you want. And uh, because his goal was to change the criminal uh, legal system, the criminal uh, yeah, legal system in the United States. And so what, why not use something which at the time, drug use in 1994, um, 1993, 1994 was um, unacceptable and the idea of legalizing it was unthinkable. So, okay, uh, he started with that. So he created his own foundation and uh, funded another foundation. He created several foundations and started funding it and gave a lot of money to start with propaganda. Uh, right, he hired all kinds of people and the people that he had in his uh, organizations to write articles in favor of drug legalization, all drugs. Uh, when they tried to have uh, new laws, it, it, and he, he focused on Arizona and California. When he, in Arizona, uh, there was a pushback. I said, no, you cannot legalize all drugs. So he decided, okay, so let's try and legalize marijuana. Uh, but we don't say that we want to legalize marijuana and we will say that we want to use medicinal marijuana. But there was no medicinal marijuana. Even today, with all the developments um, uh, of marijuana um, uh, research, etc., there is still only there are still only four. FDA approved medicines uh, that have been uh, produced from 
uh, buy pharmaceutical companies from uh, research, long time research uh, with cannabinoids, the effective ingredients uh, that in, in cannabis, in marijuana. Only four. In the meantime, today, they are selling marijuana everywhere. So, uh, so what people are using is uh, something that they shouldn't be using. And the content of the tetraidocannabinol, which is the uh, effective ingredient that um, affects the mind, uh, is uh, much, much higher than people who grew up in the 60s or 70s have been using or the 80s. The content is, can be even 50%. Uh, but I'll speak about it later. So this was his first attempt. And he didn't go to Congress, to lobby Congress to change the law. No. He started with grassroots organizations to change the laws from within in cities, in states, a lot of propaganda in order to um, get the laws changed. And, and that's, what he, uh, that's what he has done. And today there are 38 states that have legalized marijuana and the others have other forms of either medicinal or if not recreational. So, and the business is booming, but not booming as much as he said it will be because uh, he, he, pro he promised, he said, once uh, marijuana is legalized, all the black market will disappear, and, and so there will be less crime. Well, no, um, if you live in New York, uh, or if you don't live in New York, if you live in the United States, you know that crime did not disappear, more people are, are being doped, and, uh, and there are more attacks, and there is more crime. And the states are not getting the revenues they should uh, if it was all legally uh, sold and marketed uh, because most of the drugs are being purchased in illegal stores. So, um, but uh, putting that aside, he also made a statement at the time and he said, well, some drugs are addictive, marijuana is not, which was a complete lie and he knew that at the time. Uh, so he succeeded. He wanted to see how much you can push Americans and how successful he will be in efforts to change the criminal justice system. And that's what he has done. Slowly, slowly, incrementally, uh, this is how the laws have been changed. And this is what he has done later on. We're trying to, um, not much later on, but this is how we see how uh, Fast forward, he started to fund the election of uh, district attorneys, of prosecutors uh, in district attorney's offices, of judges in places where they are elected. And uh, this is how he started to change really how the law is being enforced in the United States or not being enforced in the United States. Um, he funded research, uh, and paid organizations that worked in order to um, limit uh, incarceration and change laws regarding incarceration in the United States. I'm not saying that the American legal system did not need a reform. It did. I think every country needs some legal reform once in a while. Um, but uh, he did it in order to uh, in order to create more chaos and let more people out of prison, people who should be there. Because for Soros, um, victimology or being a victim is a big issue. He sees himself or he claims he sees himself as a victim because if, if anybody criticizes his policies, well, that's of course, he's a victim of anti-Semitism. They are attacking him because he's a Jew, right? Well, beside the fact that he claimed that he's, uh, he, he himself declared that he's agnostic, uh, he, um, has been, he grew up in a home where uh, he said that his mother uh, was anti-Semitic. Uh, they didn't observe anything. It was not a Jewish home. Uh, uh, Soros had written all kinds of interesting things. And what we know, most of we know, about Soros' background is what Soros has told us. 
there is really hardly any independent information about it. And in my research, uh, and I traveled around, <laughs> really around the world, and a lot in Europe also to find information, and people who used to work for Soros or with Soros uh, don't want to talk. Uh, some said that they feel that they feel more secure if they don't talk. And um, but the information, according to European uh, laws, uh, you cannot obtain information about uh, a living person unless that person gives you uh, authority or uh, the family allows it. So uh, you would think that the Hungarians, for example, would be interested in leaking some information. Um, well, no, they, <laughs> they don't, uh, which is kind of very interesting uh, since he had been, um, he has been uh, very much in the public eye and have been very active in Hungary and have been trying to depose uh, Orban and his government for many years now. The, um, in, in um, relation to, so when I saw at the beginning, when I saw what Soros was doing with drugs, I realized that this is only a test. And I wrote in the Wall Street Journal and in other publications uh, that unchallenged Soros will be able to change the political landscape of the United States. I didn't have a crystal ball, but I was able to recognize um, his um, intentions uh, for what they were, and I was right. So I was um, threatened uh, by, there were attempts to intimidate me in all kinds of different ways. Uh, but I, um, that kind of raised my curiosity mm -hmm. and why, why um, I, you know, after writing this, why did he, he, he try to sue me for libel? Well, I can write my opinion. I didn't write anything which was not true. So, of course, nothing happened. But there was a time to silence me. There was a time also to silence the publication, uh, the publications that published what I've written. Um, I continued with my research and I saw and I wrote early on in 1995, 96 about his effort to increase illegal migration to the United States. That was the second thing. Uh, so Biden's open borders didn't come out of nowhere. Biden open, so, uh, open bo Biden's open borders uh, are the continuation of uh, what Soros have been preaching for, for a long time. He has done it also, of course, in Europe before with the Arab Spring, when he influenced the European Union, the European Commission, uh, to allow in um, millions of, uh, of um, so-called um, asylum seekers, not all of them were asylum seekers, some of them were, uh, from the Middle East, Syria, but then there were many Africans came, and uh, they are still coming. And uh, they created a lot of havoc, and there were many um, incidents that all of you read about them in the newspapers. So he has been very active in his effort to change the world. And he claims that um, what, uh, what really is behind his um, uh, ideas, what prompted him uh, to think about is uh, is um, his studies with uh, Karl Popper. Uh, he studied at uh, London School of Economics and one of the professors was Karl Popper and uh, that he was influenced by the Open Society um, article uh, that uh, um, Popper had written. Um, uh, what Popper had written uh, is not exactly what Soros had been preaching uh, or trying to do. So later on, Soros, who thinks of himself as an unacknowledged philosopher, had uh, written his own, he corrected Popper, said, well, Popper was wrong here. No, this is how it should be. So he kind of edited Popper uh, to serve his, pur his purposes. Um, reading Soros is, is a 
cruel and unusual punishment, and I had to read everything he had written, speeches that he had given in order to be able to write this book. And I thought that writing it now is important because he had pushed his agenda so much in the United States that uh, the, all the woke progressivism, uh, his influence on the Biden administration today, most uh, top officials in, in the administration have links with Soros. Uh, either worked with the with his major organization or have been scholars, have benefited from it one way or the other, most of the top officials. Um, and uh, there is also um, the Center for American, um, it's, it's the Center for um, American um, uh, Policy, which is uh, run now by Kaspard, the former, uh, one of the former executives at the um, Open Society Foundation, which Politico says is the most uh, influential think tank in, um, in um, Washington. And it, it is really across the street from the White House. And there are also the Open Society Policy uh, Institute, which is a lobbying arm. Uh, he, his organizations are directly, indirectly, linked to him, funded by him, are all over the place. Um, so the influence is huge. The, um, over, over time, uh, he, he started actually his first, as he, as he told, uh, a former biographer, not official biographer of him, Michael Kaufman, uh, he said that he started his first initiative in um, South Africa. Uh, and he went, this was still during the apartheid, and he went to South Africa and then he decided to give some students, he says, uh, some stipends so that they can learn more about democracy. Well, but they are in South Africa, right? Apartheid in South Africa. And he didn't give the money directly to the students, he gave it to the apartheid run university owned by the government. And wow, he was so surprised to see that the, actually the university used the money for other purposes. And even if the students got the money, well, there was nothing about democracy. Well, what a surprise. It was an apartheid state. So he, he stopped that. Um, a similar thing happened in China. Soros had also opened, um, tried to uh, open, not an open society foundation. You cannot have anything named open society in China, he knew that. So he called it something else. And he negotiated with the Chinese authorities, which is the Communist Party, uh, to open this institute. And they promised him that no member of the Communist Party uh, will be affiliated working with the organization. That's what he says. And to his surprise, well, he found out later that there were members of the Communist Party. What do you know? <laughs> so uh, he had to leave. The Chinese actually threw him out. Uh, he lost a few million dollars. That was it. Um, so he spoke out a lot about uh, Z and the Communist Party in China. However, at the same time, um, his, his, uh, his financial organizations uh, are doing business with China, uh, which is um, okay. So that's what uh, many people do, right? The American government does the same. Uh, they are, and they don't actually speak out so much against uh, Xi. Um, Soros also worked with the communist um, regimes, um, the Soviet Union with the KGB, and he actually spoke about it. There was a big article about him in 1995 in the New Yorker, and he was kind of laughing and he said, well, you know, uh, they wanted something from me and I wanted something from them. So uh, he invested in, uh, in uh, then the Soviet Union, uh, made some money. Uh, and he was very much involved uh, with, uh, in the Soviet, former Soviet uh, republics after uh, the fall of the Soviet Union. 
he um, he had to leave Putin finally finally threw him out because he didn't well, he didn't like his interferences and um, but that came later and he lost money he lost a few billion dollars in uh, in Russia but he made many more we don't know how much um, regarding uh, Israel. Um, oh, and by the way, speaking of Russia, he has been very much involved in Ukraine uh, from even before the fall of the Soviet Union and certainly after, immediately after. He had helped the US government efforts uh, to remove uh, nuclear weapons from Ukraine. Uh, and uh, later he got very much uh, involved in appointing uh, prime ministers, presidents, you name it, uh, and buying up a lot of uh, properties there. He, um, he appointed, uh, well, he was involved in, uh, uh, in 2004, 2005 in the Orange Revolution, and uh, which was not, strangely, he's not uh, boasting about so much, but I was there as an election observer and I actually witnessed how uh, Soros Operative, the Open Society Foundation, uh, have discussed the demonstrations that they will have um, after the election, but th they were discussing it on the plane ride from London to Kiev before the election actually took place. They were discussing how the, election, how the demonstrations will go. So this was interesting. And I was there, I witnessed it for, because there were three elections. I was there for all of them and I saw what happened. This was the Orange Revolution. Uh, of course, the State Department helped him and the European community also. The, um, and they were very uh, blasé about it. They didn't even try to, to hide it. They were paying at the time uh, at the central, uh, central square in, Mos in, uh, in Kiev this was uh, December, November, December. It was very cold. There was a lot of snow. There was a lot of ice on the streets. And uh, people were bussed in from all over the country. Uh, they received at the time, the average income, if you had a nice income in Ukraine was about $50 a month. Uh, the people who came to demonstrate who were bussed in received $100 a day. So there were many, many volunteers uh, to be in to participate in these demonstrations. They got uh, um, uh, they got accommodations. They they had food, whatever. Uh, so it was interesting to see. Um, then um, uh, he, he repeated it, of course, in in 2014. He also received an honorary uh, the the highest honors uh, to foreigners that the. Uh, Ukrainian government uh, was giving at the time, and he has been involved in every election in everything that is happening there. And the organization that uh, was involved with Burisma and investigating corruption in uh, in Ukraine is an organization that Soros funded, uh, and the U.S. government also was involved with. So, uh, but there is more, and this is a separate issue. Uh, in Israel, uh, Soros, um, who claims to be a victim of uh, anti-Semitism, uh, he's really using it as, as a shield uh, in, order to, um, in order to divert any attention from him. Um, he, um, he doesn't like uh, the Jewish state of Israel, and he said so. Uh, he thinks that Jews living in one place, uh, having a state of their own, is, is not good, it's tribalism, and it leads to all kinds of, uh, of uh, political systems and political decisions and policies that um, are not good. And what does it mean a Jewish state? You have, you have the Arabs there, and so you, you are not, you, why don't you give the Arabs the rights to, um, um, to be, it's, it's not even two states solution, it's, it's a one state solution if you want. Um, uh, he has been involved, he spoke out against it um, uh, quite uh, well on and off. 
his son Alexander had just issued uh, a statement last week uh, together with other um, prominent uh, progressive woke left uh, demolishing the uh, Bibi uh, government uh, for the legal reforms and saying that um, uh, the uh, that uh, this is hurting American uh, Bibi Netanyahu's uh, government with the legal reform, uh, uh, damaging uh, U.S.-Israel relations, and they are damaging uh, U.S. interest in the region. How how the how the legal reform in Israel is damaging U.S. interest in the region? I don't know, but apparently the Biden administration has done it. Uh, has actually warned. Uh, the Netanyahu government uh, in, in the same manner. So Alex now is doing what his father has been doing uh, and continuing the tradition. Um, more on, on Soros activity. Soros has been uh, uh, funding uh, not, uh, not only the Israel, uh, uh, the Israel, uh, what is it? <clears throat> it's many Israeli left um, anti-Israel left Jewish organizations and Arab organizations, um, as well as in the in Gaza and in the West Bank, and Gaza and the Shomron, and uh, his uh, his university because he has a so open society university or the Soros University. Um, he also funding um, the Birzeit University. Uh, which is a stronghold of Hamas. Um, and other, actually, the organizations that are affiliated with the PLFP, which is a designated terrorist organization by the United States, uh, as well as Israel. Um, so his efforts to do damage uh, and to hurt Israel has been constant and effective, supports the BDS. So when um, his spokesperson was asked a few years ago, well, how is it that you are actually giving money um, to such organizations? He said, well, we give out so much, we give out so many grants, we don't know where our money is ending, you know, uh, which is not a very good legal argument uh, to, um, um, to present. However, he has never been, uh, and his organizations are very much active politically, promoting political agendas, his political agendas. Yet, uh, the 503, the charity uh, status, have, has not been affected uh, because the IRS is not doing it, and apparently nobody sued them uh, in order to uh, get this done. So, um, this is really very generally uh, the, the story. The, the book is, the book really lays out the game plan that he had and how it evolved, how it developed, what, what are the strategies that he's been using. And uh, reading it helps to understand uh, what are we dealing with and how this came about. He's much more involved with uh, the development of uh, um, work progressivism, uh, uh, left progressivism uh, in the Democrat Party, uh, then people realize it. And I think that reading it would help not only understand, but also to those who would like to counter it, uh, would help to um, devise some strategies in order to counter what is going on. Um, the uh, the book is uh, the book is available on ACD. Um, if you look at my uh, my organization is the American Center for Democracy and the Economic Warfare Institute, and um, uh, it is available on Amazon, uh, Barnes and Noble, and other booksellers. And um, it is um, I think it's interesting to read. Um, um, it's, uh, it's not a long book, uh, so you don't have to devote too much time to it. Uh, it's only about 100 pages of text, and the rest, uh, 150 pages, are references. So you can check everything. The book have been, uh, has been heavily vetted. 
And um, I'm actually adding uh, um, just a few paragraphs to the end of the book about Alex Soros, so it will be updated. Uh, and I would, um, I would be glad to answer all questions. If there are any. <laughs> okay, well, thank I'm sure there will be. And thank thank you very much, Dr. Ehrenfeld, for, for that wonderful presentation. Um, when, when is the update to your book coming out? Do, do you know? Well, it's only, it doesn't matter, because uh, I uh, I already wrote about uh, Alex um, in, in, in the book. Uh, I already wrote about him being chosen as the heir and, and uh, how Soros went around with him, George, and introduced him to um, heads of states and, and um, uh, all kinds of heads of uh, international organizations. Uh, so that is there. So uh, it, it just really perform uh, uh, addition. Uh, Alex is already there. Um, and um, it's, um, it's interesting because um, I know many people scratch their head and say, well, how, how, did, how did we get here? How did we get here? Uh, if you read this, you will understand uh, better. Um, and um, it's important to, there are all kinds of stories about Soros and all kinds of, uh, um, many things are attributed to him, which he didn't do. Uh, however, more bad things <laughs> that he has done are not attributed to him, and you can read about them in the book. This is not a biography. This is really how his plans have evolved, especially regarding the United States and Israel, have evolved. And there is also about Hungary and other countries and uh, how his plans evolved and what kind of strategies he's been using to, um, to promote them and what is his influence, uh, what was his influence in previous administration, democratic administration, and what is his influence with the Biden administration today. All right. Well, thank you so much. I, I just wanted to mention to everybody, if you have questions, there's several ways to ask them. One is to put it into the chat. Um, another way is to raise your hand. And um, you can also mention in the chat uh, if you uh, that you'd like to ask your question live, and we're happy to, speak, to call on you. Um, Okay, so let's uh, let's see. Mary, Miriam Schenker has a very interesting question in the in the chat, uh, which I'm sure uh, all of us uh, are very interested in. And <laughs> Miriam says, uh, "Great talk, thank you." Can you talk a little about uh, Soros's motivation for his causes? Um, I did not. Uh, I did not. I met Soros. Um, uh, he yelled at me <laughs> when I tried to correct him. Uh, he was saying something which was not, um, I, it's in the book, it's, it's kind of a funny episode. Um, I did interview him for this book and I, um, I, uh, I don't know that had I, even speaking with him, he would explain his motives. Uh, he says that he thought of himself, uh, the man is megalomaniac, uh, there is no ifs or buts about it. Uh, he says that um, when he was young, he thought of himself as God, and after he made uh, so much money uh, betting, betting against the British pound, he says, well, now that I actually uh, I have all this money, I can live it out, and well, he's living it out, so he's doing whatever he can. I think that an interesting, an interesting, uh, and, and I ask it, uh, and I point out it in the book, he has done many things and he influenced many uh, events around the world, which uh, even, he's not the richest man in America, he's never been, uh, but he has more influence than most of them. So how did he become so influential? I think that's probably part of the, uh, part of the question. Um, uh, he is very good at marketing and he had a lot of help. Uh, how he got this help from all kinds of uh, minister, different, different governments in different places, uh, a lot has to do with Germany, uh, which is kind of interesting. So um, he, is, uh, he, he certainly has used interesting uh, 
tactics, uh, and he is, he is the bigger founder of the Democratic Party. So uh, that's a very good way to, uh, to uh, be able to obtain influence. Hey, hold on a second. Um, you know, we have another a very a good uh, you know, uh, question from Susan Krevsky. She's saying a basic question, what is Soros' end game? Uh, well, his end game is to, well, he said he, 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 he saw the United States, he said that the main obstacle to a stable and just world order is the United States. That's what he said. And I'm, there, there are, the book is full of citations from Soros, because I, I look at the citations, I look at what he said and say, okay, so how did he go about it? Well, so he went, uh, he went ahead and he tried to uh, um, uh, destabilize um, the United States so that it will be weaker. He didn't like it as a superpower. He many, said many things against it. And he doesn't like capitalism. So uh, it made him very rich, but uh, apparently he doesn't want other people. He didn't want other people to, get, uh, to use the same system to get rich. So he spoke out against both. And he even had uh, an interesting article about what changes he would make in the Constitution, because the Constitution was written well so many years ago, and it's anachronistic. It's it's not, uh, and the people who wrote the Constitution, our founding fathers, didn't really understand the world the way we do today. So he had ideas about how to uh, uh, change the Constitution. And the focus there also was on how to change the legal system, how to the Supreme Court is no more, uh, shouldn't be the way it is. So many ideas that we hear about changes uh, or packing the Supreme Court, for example, Soros had been uh, actually had written about it many years ago. So references to that and about it are in the books, are in my book. Um, so uh, he, he really, that's, that was his major goal, uh, to, uh, change, uh, to change the Constitution and to change the, um, to change the United States. That's a big uh, undertaking, and he succeeded, unfortunately, probably beyond his uh, wildest imagination or expectation. OK. Um and then also we have here um, a couple of comments, one by David Jacobs and one by Susan Krebsky about the problems with the Soros-funded New Israel Fund. Yeah. And I'm wondering if you could speak to that. And of course, you know, as, as many people here probably know, the New Israel Fund then um, passes through grants to a lot of anti-Israel NGOs. Yeah. Um, the... Soros has been funding um, of most left anti-Israel organizations uh, from, from very early on. Um, he, and, and much of the money, uh, although you know, all of you are familiar probably with NGO Monitor, some yeah. of the funding are mentioned there, but not all. Because Soros is using um, pass through foundations to pass money to. Uh, yeah, like also like the, the Tides, yeah. fam Tides Foundation. Yeah, the Tides Town Foundation yeah. is big. But he's also using, for example, he's working together with the Ford Foundation, with the Carnegie Foundation, with European foundations, the European Union, which are also funneling money to uh, Palestinian and left with uh, organizations in, the, in, in, in Israel. So uh, tracking the money uh, from Soros to these organizations is um, kind of a very, very uh, tall task. Mm -hmm. uh, and even with good forensic uh, accounting, it would be difficult to do uh, because it's not only, it's not only one, uh, once one removed, uh, it's actually there are different uh, levels of how the money is moving. Uh, and there are all kinds of stipends to uh, different 
people who are active with these organizations that are also being uh, transferred to the organization. So um, uh, if you take uh, uh, Black Lives Matter, for example, they have been working with the Palestinians too and money from Black Lives Matter and the visits by Black Lives Matter uh, to, uh, uh, to the Palestinian um, rural territories, uh, they carried also money with them. So it's very, there are every, every way you can imagine, uh, they found ways in order to move the money there. And the goal actually of, of the state, yeah, they don't want any, they don't want a Jewish state, and uh, because uh, it's an apartheid state, Soros was one that uh, funded the uh, Durham conference, the apartheid conference uh, uh, from the get-go. Uh, so uh, money has been <clears throat> flowing to these organizations uh, throughout the years. Yeah, <coughs> huge, huge problem. Um, and you mentioned um, the uh, Palestinian organizations, you know, and, and I know in the book, several, you know, you had quite a few mentions of the PFLP. That's something that we've been talking about a lot, which is the Black Lives Matter connections and promotion yeah. of P, the PFLP connection, uh, you know, PFLP agenda. You know, that's the, uh, um, the, uh, um, uh, what is it, for the liberation of Palestine, which is, you know, yeah. one, of the worst terror, ter one of the worst terrorist groups. Um, yeah. Can you speak a, a little bit about, you know, some of these PFLP connections to NGOs that um, Soros is, is funding and, and front yeah, and, for the and even, and even when the even when the Israeli government uh, a few years ago um, had uh, listed uh, several uh, organizations me, uh, as affiliated Popular Front for the Liberation of Palestine. Yeah. I think of what the first piece stood for before. Yeah, as, as affiliated with, uh, uh, with the Palestinian uh, terrorist organizations, um, they only made a statement about that, but they, and designated them, but there was no, um, but they didn't make the connection that the money actually also came from Soros or uh, the Rockefeller Foundation. Or, so it's kind of, they stopped, um, I don't know why they do it, but uh, it's probably political, or maybe they are not looking. Uh, but they should have been identified. Mm -hmm. right. um, let's see. Arnold Pakman um, asks: um, There are many other there are many other rich America-hating Marxists out there besides Soros. Why has this yeah. uncharismatic former Nazi collaborator been so successful in destroying America and Israel? Well, uh, he has been. Um, he, I guess he, he appointed himself and many people probably don't want to call too much attention to themselves and here is so also they are funneling money through him. Uh, he has been, he's been working also with Christian anti-Israel um, anti organizations too. Uh, so it's not, uh, he, he works with anybody that will actually harm Israel. Uh, so, um, and the United States apparently. Um, he is, yeah, I, I mentioned there are some other organizations, but uh, the Carnegie and the Rockefeller and the Ford Foundation uh, came only later to the game. Uh, so uh, they have been fought probably earlier than others. But he was, uh, uh, Soros has been really the, the, the tip of the spear in, in moving um, uh, NGOs to fund uh, uh, anti-Israel uh, activities. And um, it's, uh, it's uh, and again, he didn't do it alone. He often did it with the State Department, uh, absolutely. Uh, so um, he has been involved with, uh, with um, uh, preparing for, preparing, helping the Muslim Brotherhood uh, with their propaganda campaign even before the Arab Spring started by training young people from Syria, from Egypt, from other countries uh, in social media. Today, social media is widely used, but at the time it was not. This was 2009, 2010. Uh, so, and he's been doing it with the help of the State Department. They were doing it in the Balkans. They were doing it in Europe. Um, so um, he's been involved a lot with actually 
promoting Muslim Brotherhood um, and um, of course anti-Israel uh, activities and pro-Muslim activities. Yeah. So, religion is good when it's Muslim, I guess, uh, when it's Islam, but not when, uh, when, not when it's Jewish mm -hmm. or Christian. <coughs> There, there, there's so many interesting um, things you know, that you mentioned in this book. Um, uh, let, let me mention a couple of maybe you can comment about. Um, one is you mentioned that the B Biden's election was heavily backed by Soros, and sure. uh, maybe you can speak about that. Another one is um, the um, you know, his involvement in the Quincy Institute. Yeah. Another one is you know his uh, you know that uh, by uh, that uh, Soros. Involvement with the uh, with the Iran uh, with the Iran deal, yeah, with the Iran uh, deal funding the plowshares, plowshares, which in turn funded J Street directly funding J Street, which promoted the you know both of which promoted the Iran deal, and the um, involvement and with Quincy, Robert with Robert uh, Malley. Yeah, and Quincy yeah. Institute, yeah, Quincy Institute as well, uh, which is completely uh, it's Iranian lobby actually in Washington. Right. Uh, that have been promoting and being used as an echo chamber to promote this was started big time with Obama uh, promoting the Iran deal and by the way the uh, Jack Lew uh, is being the former uh, Secretary of Treasury is being mentioned as the next uh, ambassador to Israel well Jack Lew was at a, a treasury when Obama made the deal when Obama actually transferred uh, cash to uh, cash to the uh, Iranians, now right. this was this was really um, money laundering, reverse money. This was no, this was funding terrorism, right? Uh, and and yet it was not stopped. It was truly funding terrorism. And right. the interesting thing about it was that uh, the U.S. Uh, the U.S. Uh, Treasury sent money dollars to uh, the Federal Reserve in New York, and the Federal Reserve in New York sent uh, Swiss Swiss um, francs in Swiss money. Uh, they didn't they didn't exchange the money in Switzerland, but they loaded the planes here that went to Switzerland with Swiss money that was taken from the Federal Reserve here, here in New York. Which is very interesting in some Dutch, uh, <clears throat> some uh, uh, also uh, Dutch, um, well, EU that came from, uh, that uh, belonged to, uh, to the Netherlands, but mostly it was uh, Swiss francs, um, which was really <coughs> a money laundering operation. Yes. Financing. Yeah. But, but by the way, we just have, we have a piece right um, that's coming out, an article or op-ed that's coming out today about the problems with Jack Lew and Jack, Jack Lew's, yeah. you know, promotion of the Iran deal and why he's such yeah. a terrible uh, choice for yes. yeah. the fact that he's the fact to that Israel. He's, yeah, the fact that he's Orthodox Jew doesn't make much difference. <laughs> and, uh, really? oh, you know, he, he also promoted uh, resolu UN Resolution 2334, which was a disaster and yep. you know, claimed that uh, the, the Kotel and, you know, and, and Jerusalem and, and Judea and Samaria and, and Hadassah Hospital are, are all uh, Arab occupied, you know, occupied Arab territory. Yeah. And, you know, so, and so, yeah. And, and so we have, and many of the people that have been with the Obama administration that are still connected with the Biden administration, of course, are also people that have been connected with the, uh, with Soros. Mm -hmm. So um, his, uh, I mean, his uh, footprints are everywhere. Um, and um, yeah, the question of influence is very interesting and appropriate. And I think that uh, reading the book would uh, help uh, gauging it a, li a little bit better. Uh, okay. indeed, you know, most, most um, billionaires who started um, um, even Carnegie at the time, the robber barons, they did all kinds of things to help the, um, to help the citizens. Um, um, opening libraries, uh, funding hospitals, uh, funding schools. Uh, well, the schools that he supports are schools that I don't think you want your children or grandchildren to go to. 
uh, and, are, and, and the ideologies that he has been promoting uh, are being pushed down the throats anyway. So, um, uh, yeah, he managed to cause a lot of harm. I know. Um, Barbara Kital has a, I hope I pronounced that correctly, has a question. Uh, what did you do about Soros's defamation against, against you? Well, um, I the book has been thoroughly, thoroughly, thoroughly vetted. <laughs> Everything I use, uh, I cite Soros throughout the book. And every information, every piece of information has been verified. Uh, it's always more than one source. Um, even if one source is mentioned, um, uh, there is always another, at least. So I have been, and I used many um, sources from many languages as well. So I um, really collected uh, huge amounts of information over the years, and I used them uh, in order to uh, prevent uh, a defamation lawsuit. I don't tell everything. I things that I'm not. Um, Things that I cannot document, I don't talk about, and I didn't write about. So everything that I say is uh, is I, I can I can prove. Now this doesn't uh, necessarily stop the defamation lawsuit. He can sue me. He has money, uh, and one of the things that we know uh, is being used against people is um, is lawfare. And, uh, you know, if he has a lot of money, he can go to court and the court takes the, the, the lawsuit, then, um, you know, I'm in trouble. I don't have any money. So, um, uh, but that's a, that's a way to silence people. It's being used to silence people. So, uh, but I thought that it's very important that people will know about this. Um, and uh, because, I tried speaking early on with major, major, major contributors uh, to the Republican Party. Some of them were Jews, some of them were not. And I brought a lot of evidence with me. This was years ago. And um, uh, it was interesting, but nobody wanted to do anything because they were investing with Soros. Investing, investing with the quantum fund was a good deal. Uh, the return was always very good. So um, I guess money speaks louder than um, louder than the truth. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, so um, it, it it really didn't do anything. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. By the way, uh, we I just wanted to mention uh, we're having a book club on uh, September twelfth um, on uh, Bedouinistan by uh, someone involved with um, the Regavim NGO, you know, one of the officials of the Regavim NGO, which should be very interesting. Um, Jackie, do you have, um, oh, Jackie has the link for, she's nodding. <laughs> she has the link for that and she'll put it in the chat if people want to si want to sign up for that. Um, oh, and yeah, I see she, she's already put it in, in the chat and hope, we are hoping to see everybody there. And let me uh, ask one or two more questions. Um, I, yeah, you know, we I, I brought up Robert Malley, and I'm one, you know, and his he apparently was also president of another Soros-funded group, the International oh. Crisis Group. If you could speak about that, well, and also I, and and also the involvement in um, the uh, Soros is the Soros group's involvement in the propaganda condemning the killing of uh, Soleimani when Soleimani was a you know had had so much American blood and Israeli blood on his hand and was about to. Um, you know, to to uh, he was on his way to another attack against the American. Uh, so. Yeah, well, it was uh, it, uh, Robert Malley was with the crisis group. But crisis group is also uh, 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 Alex Soros is uh, is on the board of the crisis group as well, uh, and Soros has funded the crisis group. Um, so yeah, the the connections are there. Uh, they, of course, have uh, uh, issued many statements condemning Israel for being, I guess, uh, for everything. Uh, actually, defaming Israel a lot because they really had some blood libels against Israel, uh, promoting blood libel uh, accusations. Um, and uh, the Key Institute um, 
uh, has been uh, uh, really came out with very strong um, uh, condemnation of uh, the killing of Soleimani. Uh, they attacked, of course, uh, Senator Cotton was heavily attacked. And so he went and actually looked a little bit into the activities and he mentioned that uh, this organization is actually pro-Iran. It's an Iranian organization, uh, Iranian lobby, and that they are also spreading anti-Semitism. And he was right. Uh, so I also write about that. Um, they accuse everybody. They, Trump is an anti-Semite. Um, at the same time that he's, uh, he's also, uh, of course, um, uh, never mind that he has a, a, a daughter that converted to Judaism as an anti-Semite. And what he did, he did because he got money from this or the other. I mean, they defend anybody and everybody. And a major, two major enemies that uh, Soros has really wanted to, or, or major uh, leaders that three, that Soros wanted to see um, uh, gone and punished, not only gone, but punished, uh, are Trump, of course. Uh, before him, it was Bush, but Trump really is just very, very, uh, uh, very violent and, and very um, uh, aggressive um, statements by Soros uh, and Bibi Netanyahu, uh, so, and Putin. So those are uh, the enemies, major enemies. Um, and um, Putin, I understand, because Putin, and Putin, by the way, when uh, Trump met in Finland with Putin, uh, Trump said something about uh, one of the people who is involved in one of the oligarchs uh, that is involved with the uh, food industry, etc. a friend of Putin, who was funding all kinds of activities, anti-American activities, as, um, as Trump described them. And so uh, Putin said, well, and you have souls. He didn't say any more, but that was a very interesting statement. Mm -hmm. um, the only thing I think that uh, Bibi had actually said uh, about him was at a time when um, the Hungarian had a fantastic um, campaign, uh, anti-illegal uh, migration campaign, showing Soros uh, smiling um, kind of, um, and, and the statement was under the statement of the, um, on this, uh, uh, on the sign was, um, let's not give him the last, uh, the last laugh. Um, and it was a very, uh, I think it was an excellent <clears throat> campaign. Uh, so immediately, immediately, and everybody understood that this was about uh, illegal migration, uh, everybody in Hungary. So of course, the, um, the, the uh, left, mostly left press, immediately came out and attacked Orban, that this was not the Hungarians, that this was anti-Semitic because it was against uh, Soros. Uh, the Israeli ambassador, so everybody started to um, condemn this, uh, 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 this propaganda uh, and uh, the Israeli ambassador then in Hungary also said, well, there shouldn't be really, and he was pushed to that also uh, by the local um, leadership of the Jewish community, uh, saying that, well, uh, yeah, anti-Semitism is not good something like that. Um, so um, um, Bibi Netanyahu uh, made a statement that no, criticizing Soros, Soros's activities has nothing to do with anti-Semitism. And he's right. Absolutely. Um, I completely <laughs> agree with him. So, but this was the only time. And, and I mean, what Trump says about Soros, I think not enough. <laughs> Right. No, I mean, we, we, we've dealt with that issue a number of times when, yeah. you know, you know, in, in, in both, um, you know, for instance, uh, there's a wonderful congressman, um, 
uh, Louis Gohmert, very pro yeah. Israel congressman from Texas, and he was accused when he spoke out against Soros, he was accused of anti Semitism. And you know, everybody, Rudolf Giuliani, uh, uh, people, who, him. people who used to uh, uh, speak, uh, I mean, people who used to work at Fox News and no longer work there, uh, some of them have been uh, actually fired or silenced uh, or punished because they mentioned. Uh, um, Soros doing something, so this was considered anti Semite, which is not. I know, you know, when, when you make wrongful accusations of anti Semitism, it makes it much harder to, you know, to go after people who are really anti Semitic. But the media, but the media and, and the way that the announcement was made about uh, Alex Soros taking over, also, there was, it's really, it was not an, it was supposedly an interview, but it was not. It was a glorified PR uh, statement, and they included uh, a picture of Soros and Alex during Alex's bar mitzvah. He was the only son that had actually a bar mitzvah. Uh, and so what was it doing there? It kind of, it really didn't belong there. What was it doing there? This was a very clear message of intimidation to everybody. You criticize me, You'll, you'll have the same reaction as when you criticize my father. If you criticize me, you are doing, if you are doing that, you're an anti-Semite. Yep. So lay off. I got the message, uh, and I think that many others probably will, and if not, they will be called anti-Semites anyway. Yeah, it's bullying. It's outright bullying. Yeah. Um, yeah, and... Um... You know, I, I I wanted to mention a couple of thing, other things I saw in the chat. Uh, one is uh, Arnold Packman mentioned that there is a group called Jews Against Anti Jews Against Soros. Yes, um, which I I did not know about. Did did you? Uh, kind yeah, of they 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 declared that they are they uh, created this organization, but they haven't done anything that I've seen. I kind of tried to follow, uh, but I didn't see actually anything afterwards. Okay, and we, I think we have time just for one more question. Um, Robert Guzardi is asking, can you speak more about the orange Hi, revolution? Robert. <laughs> <laughs> the orange revolution and uh, made in coup. Hello? Yeah, no. You know, uh, if, that no. I, I should, uh, okay, yeah. yeah. That was his question. Uh, he, he put yeah, it in yeah. the chat. The uh, Soros was involved in organizing both uh, because he didn't like um, the presidents that were in place uh, were not apparently accommodating him enough, uh, and he wanted uh, he wanted um, uh, other people there. So initially, he was supporting uh, the 2004 revolution was because uh, he he wanted he didn't want the the prime minister was. Uh, uh, a, a, so, uh, Russian uh, friend of the Russians. The Russians have been dominating, uh, um, um, dominating uh, Ukraine politics all along. Uh, so um, he wanted somebody else and the State Department, of course. But he he has been influencing the State Department all along. He actually had an office, and he started with it. He started this during the Clinton administration, uh, uh, to the extent that. Um, uh, people who work there said, well, Soros has his own foreign policy. Uh, he's the only individual who has a foreign policy, and he ran it from the State Department. Um, and uh, he did. So he, he, was, uh, he wanted somebody else in the State Department. So he was the one on the ground that organized it. Um, and uh, with his people, um, helped, uh, helped by the EU, and indirectly at the time with the U.S., uh, uh, with the State Department, which at the first time, because there were three elections in 2004, so the first election, the U.S. presence was not very, um, uh, very uh, clear, uh, but it became clearer and more uh, apparent uh, in the next ones. And I, I even wrote about it at the time in the, uh, at the Washington Times. Um, and then with the Median Revolution, it was the same. Uh, they didn't like the, uh, the president. Uh, and this was when, uh, okay, so Burisma was already there and there were all kinds of the, the sources. Uh, Anti-corruption organization was there. 
and um, so there were all kind of um, really uh, many money laundering. <laughs> a lot of money had disappeared down the hall of all kind of aids to uh, uh, to Ukraine, and they wanted somebody else. So uh, there was another revolution. Uh, he had done it also in Georgia. He was involved with the uh, revolutions uh, uh, in in Poland as well. Uh, he has been involved with several uh, color revolutions. Uh, he is involved even today with the Balkans and the tensions between Kosovo and Serbia, for example, uh, that are rising are also involving Soros and Albania. And it's very interesting. Alexander Soros is very close to the president of uh, uh, Albania, who he calls his, his good friend, Eddie Rama. And Albania has the most vicious and best organized crime group uh, that is running drugs from Latin America to Europe, especially to England. And they are causing a lot of trouble there. Uh, so, and they are, and, and uh, not only that uh, Alex Soros is very close, uh, he was there with some friends from uh, Open Society and they were wearing t-shirts saying, Soros' army <laughs> on the t-shirt, not exactly hiding the connections. Uh, and he was there actually in July, on July 4th, uh, visiting, he took with him Bill Clinton. And from there, celebrating Eddie Rama's birthday on the 4th of July, they were there to celebrate it with him and then they went to visit the Pope. So, um, the same people, the same shakedowns, uh, the same dirty dealings everywhere. Wow. They, amazing. Um, actually, I wanted, I wanted to, to ask one more really quick one um, about Daisy and Paul Soros, uh, yeah. the brother, Paul Soros. Um, you know, and, and, you know, I, you know, always enjoyed going to the, uh, the uh, music in Lincoln Center, which they, uh, you know, on the plaza in Lincoln Center, which they sponsored, and they seem to be involved in, you know, sort of more community-minded. Uh, yeah, they were supported. Are they, are, are they, they involved at all with, with, are they also involved with, uh, you know, SOARS? Yes, uh, they have, yeah, they, they, they gave more, because Daisy uh, SOARS has been very, she was very interested in music, and so uh, she helped a lot with the Philharmonic and, and the festival in the summer, the dances in Lincoln, uh, Lincoln Square. Um, but there is also, there are grants uh, for, which are part of the Open Society Foundations, uh, the Paul and Daisy <coughs> Soros grants to, um, um, whoever source wants to give grants to uh, students. So it can be somebody at Al -Azhar, from Al Azhar University, it can be somebody from, um, I don't know, from Iran, it can be somebody else from uh, uh, many of the um, uh, appoint, uh, people who were appointees or considered for office or actually got offices in the Biden administration our former grantees of the um, of the uh, Daisy and Soros uh, found, Foundation. Paul, yeah, yeah, and he also, by the way, Blinken, Blinken's parents um, had a huge. Uh, his father was a diplomat. Uh, he was ambassador to Hungary. He was very left wing. They're Jewish, but they were very much on the left, and uh, they left. Um, um, uh, their foundation uh, to be administered by um, and library uh, by um, the source foundations. So the links are everywhere. Well, this this has been just an incredible, you know, an incredible book club. There's there are many comments in the you know in the chat um, praising you and praising your book and thanking you. Well, read the book. Um, <laughs> and and I see people are, to, are also mentioning that they've just bought the book <laughs> as we were speaking, which we love to see. Um, and you know, we also love to, to we love it if people can help support ZOA so we can continue to bring you, you know, programs like this. Thank you very and, much. If people are interested in more information about Soros, 
uh, which is not in the book, they can go, because I didn't write a biography, um, they can go to and his activities with the, with the Obama Foundation, with the Iran deal, with many other, with the Balkans, with Latin America, uh, with uh, um, criminal justice, with the DAs, with everything. Uh, you can read about it at um, acdemocracy.org, American Center for Democracy. Please um, use it. Thank you. Thank you so much, Rachel. And thank, thank you, you very much. Everybody okay. and enjoy a wonderful the rest of the summer. And uh, we look forward to seeing you at the September 12th book club. Thanks, everybody. Thank